Here jumps in. Hey. Give me some happiness, bro. What up? This is Two E in the Heezy. We're on our way down to Sadek, Baby Chop Kini. We're going to be celebrating the 30th anniversary of me finding my mom. Happy, happy. Good, good. <laughs> Yo, guys, what up? Hey, guys. So let me go back 50 years. I was born in 1971 in Sedek in the Mekong Delta, Dom Top District, during the Vietnam War. I contracted polio when I was maybe about one. Then I was sent up to an orphanage in Saigon to uh, take care of my medical needs. I was adopted in 1974 to a family in America. Then in 1991, I had an opportunity to come back to Vietnam to be part of a peace walk. Then in 1993, I came back with a couple friends and I was able to find my mother. Um, on my birth certificate, it said mother and father are known, but it was signed by these nuns in Sadek. We went down to Sadek and there was like the church and that was pretty much it. So we went in there and asking around and whatnot. And woman found the ledger and I found uh, my entry 313. Under there is still mother and father unknown. There's one older lady that apparently took care of me as a child. She actually knows my family and had friends in my family. So she's like, okay, uh, let me go to Rice Fields. Your mom's in the Rice Fields right now. I'll be back in an hour. In short, mom pops out, um, grabs my hair. There's a scar on top of my head. His bell arm says I'm a son, found out I was Filipino, and the last 30 years since then has been trying to walk that fine line between the Western culture and Vietnamese culture, kind of learning about the language and about what my role is within the society and whatnot. Granted, it's been very difficult and challenging, but as you can see, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary and I've survived it. These are presents for my wife to Twee and his family. Come closer. I have to give to you. What's your name? I'm like, Oh, you're in wow. Nice to meet you. My mom will always claim that she is not a chef, doesn't know how to cook, and forgets all these dishes. But you'll see in this party that we're doing, she directs every dish. She knows what to make, and that also includes dessert. Here she is making bun in. It's from mung bean, coconut, rice flour, and peanuts. If you're allergic to peanuts, just let us know. We can make it peanut free. <laughs> This is one of her specialties. Bun in, in general, is delicious when it's first made because it's still moist. A lot of times if you get bun in, the city and stuff, it's really dry. And so you do that like cough where it just clouds of little dust that come out of your mouth. Fresh bun in is always the best. This is going in my belly. Really good. Normally I don't like these because they're dry. But this is fresh, so it's like soft and moist. <laughs> Many hands make light work and having a big family and bring them all together we can make this fabulous feast. We ended up making twelve tables worth of food, which accounts to 130 people, something like that. Curry but me, beef curry but me, which is a beef curry with fresh bread. Here at the countryside, two Oh, hi, boy. I was born in Sudak, but I really don't know anything about Sudak because when I came down to find my mother, I came to that church. 
is only like maybe 500 meters from the outside road coming into the city. So I would park my vehicle there, walk over the bridge, go down by the river, and then catch a boat, one of those uh, what my mom calls taxis. But they were just the long boat with the motor on the back. I get into that and get over to my go over to my mom's house, which took about an hour and a half on that boat. <laughs> We have some friends that are rappers. They have some friends down here in uh, Sedek, so we're actually going to see the hip hop movement here in Sedek. I'm sure these guys are cool. So we ended up hanging out at Thai's little uh, coffee shop slash barbecue place slash whatever you need place, chilling some lamb, and then we got these rotisserie rat that just straight up the pot. The rat was huge. It was like the size of a cat. Cat, rat, dude, it looked the same. It was actually pretty delicious. I had a piece, and that was good. It's like, y'all try everything right once. If I don't get sick from this this time, then I'll eat more next time. You'll see Yurka, he loved it. He only had one piece, too. <laughs> So we have uh, Mickey Mouse, <laughs> we have that pig guy, and we got the goat chilling here in Sedek. What up, Yerka? You gotta try that mouse? It's uh, the big first time. Mouse. Oh my God. We'll try it. Okay. Oh, Eating field mouse that's bigger than your dog yeah, in Sedek. It's good? Oh good. Yeah? You recommend it? Definitely. That's what I'm saying. Dude, I'll tell you one thing. Any type of meat that, uh, uh, any type of, uh, meat that's barbecued tastes good, even if it's wrapped. Mickey Mouse? Mmm. Mickey Mouse? Cherry. Vietnam fast, Saigon. Sadek style. We're the countryside. Vomit, vomit. Vomitoria, what's up? I know your shit, motherfucker. Yurka, huh? how you doing, brother? Oh. <laughs> you love me? You love Chewy Heart. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, shit, bro. Shiva! <laughs> Welcome to Vietnam, mother truckers! Put your fucking in your truck, man. This is my country, Vietnam style. Oh yeah, dude, he style. This is how we do it. And this is not even day one. This is just, you know what I'm saying? It's fucking day one. We have tomorrow. We have tomorrow night. We have that tomorrow. Mother truckers, what's up? Two East time. What up? This is Two E. We're in Sedek. This is my house. Baby Chappatini. We're checking out the pig that we're going to uh, have for dinner tonight. So uh, to, in a minute, we're going to uh, what they say, mang hell, or we're gonna kill the pig. What we'll do then is we're gonna actually, while he's bleeding out, we're going to have a big uh, uh, bowl with uh, spices. That way the uh, blood doesn't congeal. Because what we're gonna want to do is gonna, they're gonna boil the blood for tonight. You'll see that we'll take apart the whole pig. Um, we'll parcel out all the meat parts, like the rump and whatnot, to uh, my relatives, my uh, aunts. Uh, the women will take care of the uh, of the actual prepping of the meat. Um, the men will then start cleaning the, the intestines and uh, the heart and all that stuff. Because uh, tonight, uh, pre-party party, um, we'll be eating the pig intestines. And then tomorrow is going to be all the dishes. So this is us in Sedek, about to kill a pig. To eat. Out. Hey, so right now, 
Yeah. And just tied him up. When we're gonna, when we're just gonna slaughter him, we're actually gonna be putting him on chairs so that they can put their knee into it and really hold on to it. Right now we're washing it. Is he's a dirty pig? So, who do we have here? We have my younger brother, who just came into the frame. This is my cousin number 10. The guy behind him is my nephew. This is the professional, this is the owner of the pig. I'm high, that's my, my wife's older brother. So this is the true sense of hog tying a pig. You see it in cowboy uh, at the rodeos and stuff, where they ride and they grab them and they blast them with my hog tie. It's just hog tying with purpose, with a yummy ending. But the uh, journey is a little brutal. Some people, uh, some people normally have a problem with the squealing. Country coffee cheer, cheering over a dead pig. Oh yeah. Two, yeah. This is how we do it in the countryside, you okay? Here it is, two we travel, we believe in, in knowing where our meat comes from and how to eat it and make delicious dishes so that the whole village can enjoy. Here at Two Travel, we believe in things like that. <laughs> yeah. We're here in the countryside. Now I have all my uh, older cousins. They're uh, preparing bamboo uh, stock for whatever dish they're gonna do. To E again. Uh, I just want to say, you know, uh, living in the West in the United States. We're used to just getting our pigs and our chicken and our beef in a plastic container with a wrap on top, you know. And as part of the sort of the food tree, since we're kind of on top of the pyramid, I think it's uh, our responsibility to know where our uh, food comes from sometimes. And that means having to face the harsh reality of actually killing them, you know. Like here in the countryside, they kill ducks, chickens, fish all the time, no problem. But in the West, since we live in the city, we don't have that experience. So this is why I take this opportunity on a big celebration of finding my mom for 30 years. It, killing a pig becomes a family affair and binds the family, the whole village together. So if I have an opportunity to do that, and to understand where the food is coming from, I think it's my job as a human being to do that. What's the weight? Oh, this pig, by the way, is 100 kilos. So he's a big, he'll be able to feed us. But like in my family, we have 100 people. So um, the rest, the ears and stuff like that, we'll give to the guests. To the... Get that pig out. What up, to e here. We did the butchering of the pig earlier. Now it's to all my cousins. It's referred to as the Women's Meat Club. The question is, how many different dishes are they gonna make? I don't know, it's up to them. We just deal with the killing of the pig. 
So here you can see them cooking tikkal. It is boiled pork belly in coconut milk and fish sauce. In this other dish, you can see them stir frying bamboo shoots for like a salad for lunch. As you can see, even prepping the pig in the dishes for the upcoming party, there's a lot of people that come to the house, all pretty much relatives, but we break it up into table groups. There's one table that is for the guests and for myself. There's another table for like the other male relatives that want to drink. And the women usually sit at a table so they can gossip. And then we also have a fourth table sometimes for the younger kids where they sit eat separately. Just how we do it in Sadek, eating style, New Deal orange peel. So this dish is called Jiao Lam. It's like a rice porridge with all the beef, with all the pork intestines, the hearts, the liver, just basically every other part of the pig that is like just meat. It's hearty meal. Delicious, yeah, I had five bowls of it. Uh, what you want? We've been working hard all day, where is it? Mother trucker? Ooh, ooh. Yeah, let's go! Mother trucker! You like that? Yeah. Let's go! Uh, uh. <laughs> and I go down! Tikheo Kia is pig intestines, and also we have the pig's blood, which you can see is very dark and red and burgundy like. It tastes very irony. It's, you know, it's one of those things that either you love it or you don't. But oh, I, I used to eat it in my fire all the time. I thought it was a cool manly thing, but then, you know, I got over it. So also, we had another dish, koi ka, which is vinegar, chicken, and cabbage. I mean, they're all delicious. My mom cooked them. It was made with love, so what can I say? As you can see, things get pretty wild when you are killing a pig. You know, there's all the men come down because they have now delicious reason to meow. Meow is to get drunk and listen to uh, live music or kailung, which is sort of like the country sad music, or us singing, thinking that we're singing singers because we're drunk. But it's all part and partial of the fun. The women come down, they they love it too because they watch us be crazy and drink with us too. Sometimes, like my mom and whatnot, they'll go in the back room and they'll gossip. time where they get to get away from the rice fields. Everyday mundane life of the countryside, which can be very slow from time to time, and they don't ever really get a chance to come together. So when we bring them together, we get a little wild. And then in the morning, everything, like, oh, that was all of fun. Coffee, coffee. Vendo is calling. Hey, Tom, hey, Tom, hey, Tom, hey, Tom. Wake up, wake up, wake up. We gotta go see the Vendo exhibit. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, follow, and subscribe. Woo!